Hey, what's up streamers? Andrew Wall here to teach you how to become the number one live streamer on YouTube. Yeah, you can do it. In this video, I'm gonna show you three archetype examples of the best streamers on YouTube for these particular archetypes. One of them is going to be somebody who streams three times a day. The other one's gonna be one that streams one time a day for very long, and the other one's gonna be one that streams around specific events. And all three of these streamers are just crushing on YouTube and are massively successful. I'm gonna break down their strategies, their secrets, and how they got to where they are today because I've been following some of them for years, and I know exactly what they're doing and why they're successful on YouTube. Let's do it. So first things first, a lot of you may be asking, is YouTube gaming actually viable? Well, as you can see here, there are tons more channels every single day going live on YouTube gaming than there were in the past. 6,500 people right now are streaming Fortnite, 700, 700, 600, 500. The number keeps skyrocketing. YouTube is a viable alternative to Twitch. Now, overall, YouTube has 1.5 billion viewers in the world. That's a lot. Twitch only has about, I believe, 100 million, and that's a massive disparity. Twitch is, of course, is all gaming, and it's all people only watching live streams, so that is something to take into account. But YouTube, if it continues on this growth trajectory, within the next year and a half, it will actually have equal, if not greater, gaming viewership than Twitch. I've checked out the math, and that appears to be the trend that's happening right now. Twitch is sort of growing slightly month over month, whereas YouTube is still in an exponential growth scenario. So if you're gonna be choosing YouTube to stream, which I assume you are if you're watching this video, then you're gonna wanna first pick the right game. So the three games that I'm gonna show you examples of here with all of our archetypes is Fortnite, Sonic Forces, and The Forest. Just type in the names of these video games into Google Trends, make sure you select YouTube search, and then you can see how that game measures up versus other games. The important thing to note here, as you can see, is Fortnite is a magnitude larger than Sonic Forces and The Forest in this example, and that's something that I'm showing you on purpose because these streamers that I'm gonna show you aren't just streaming only the most popular games, they're using different strategies, including games that are not anywhere near the most popular on YouTube, and they're gaining success along the way. So once you see kind of the relative size of games on Google Trends you, through YouTube search, then you wanna double check on YouTube itself, and you can see what the competition and search volume is using TubeBuddy Search Explorer. I've got a link in the description below uh, to the affiliate link for my Tube Buddy. If you click that, if you download and install, I can potentially be using it for free. And if you end up paying, I get a percentage of the money that you spend on this tool. I highly recommend it. Link below. As you can see right now, just me clicking, me searching for Fortnite on YouTube, multiple live streams are showing up as the top search results for this game. Pretty interesting, right? And YouTube rewards live streams because it is the freshest possible content on the platform. The freshest, newest content is the content that YouTube wants to serve. As you guys have probably noticed, your videos when you release them on YouTube in the first 24 hours uh, end up getting a lot more views during that period of time. Then it drops up a little bit at the 48 hour mark and then it significantly declines from there after the 48 hour mark. Well, while you're live, you can actually get a number one or number two search result for a game that you may not be super well established in. As you can see, typical gamers the number two search result here. I'm actually gonna show you his channel in a moment. The other two games we're gonna talk about are Sonic Forces, which is high search volume, high competition as well, and The Forest, uh, which is another game that typical gamer has covered. Okay, all of these are very competitive, very high search volume, but make sure you cross-reference that with Google Trends to really know how they compare in terms of raw search at any given time. TubeBuddy will only give you so much information in terms of competition. So our first archetype example is Typical Gamer. I talk about him a lot in a lot of my content. I consider Typical Gamer to be one of the strongest channels on all of YouTube, 6.4 million subscribers, and growing exponentially skyrocketing from here. And what he does is he live streams multiple times per day. So this is one archetype, multiple streams per day, potentially multiple types of games. So as you can see here in the last 24 hours, he streamed a Fortnite stream, and then a separate Fortnite stream, and then um, it looks like he played The Forest, the game I was showing you right here in the search results. He's mixing it up too with his original GTA content, and he throws in a few other games along the way. 
So essentially, he's got his staple game, Grand Theft Auto. He's picked up a trending game, Fortnite, and then also he throws in other games that he enjoys, including The Forest, that are trending at any given time. But the core thing to take away from his strategy, and I'll show you uh, just the way his stream looks, he is um, very much emphasizing his personality. People love Typical Gamer because he's just a regular everyday guy, essentially. And he's just playing these games, he's enjoying them, having fun with the audience, he's very high energy, and people like that. And he designs each and every one of his live streams to be viewed as a video later. Notice his stream right up there. He only has his face cam on the screen, no other uh, baloney on the screen, like I'll show you some other tr traditional streamers, where they'll have donations, they'll have recent subs, and all these tickers around the edge with, up with status updates from Streamlabs, he just has his webcam. And that's because typical gamer strategy is to design his live streams to be viewed as a video later on. That's always been his strategy. And as a result, his videos, the VODs, the video version of his live streams that get released later, get 300,000, 500,000, 300,000, 600,000, etc. views a pop, between one and a half hours and three and a half hours each. He has designed his content, he has formatted his live stream so that you can view it later and you don't have all those annoying live streaming pop-ups and what have you there. And he also starts each one of his streams with a punch. Yo guys, Typical Gamer here and today we're gonna play The Forest. I just can't wait to do it. If you enjoyed this live stream, be sure to give it a like, etc, etc. And he starts it out like it's a video because it will eventually become a video. And that's something that gives you a significant advantage on YouTube over Twitch because Twitch videos, they don't do very well. Only live streams do well on Twitch right now. You can release videos on Twitch. They're trying to build out that functionality on the platform, but the bottom line is that's not gonna generate that much revenue for you or that much traction for you. Whereas on YouTube, it will generate significant traction. And if we go way back in time through a typical gamer's channel history, the, basically the way that he gained the level of success that he has today is many, many years ago, and you'll see the frequency of Grand Theft Auto increasing as we scroll down. He basically made videos about Grand Theft Auto before anybody else did, daily videos. And then he started live streaming Grand Theft Auto every day, multiple times a day, a few years ago uh, when the game first came out. And as a result, he got minutes watched and minutes watched and minutes watched and minutes watched for Grand Theft Auto, and that put him in a position where his channel just had an ungodly amount of minutes watched in comparison to everyone else on YouTube. As you can see, notice how much GTA content there is here even eight months ago. GTA, 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 etc. One more thing I'll say about Typical Gamer here. His thumbnails are fantastic. They work well as a video. He's not putting that he's live anywhere in these thumbnails. Each one of these thumbnails and title combos are basically watchable as a video later. World's best races. I would click that as a video. Cool. Zombie Apocalypse mod number 12. Awesome, this guy looks like he's going through the zombie apocalypse. Guardian of the Galaxy GTA 5 mods. That could be a really entertaining video for me to watch later on. Awesome, there's Groot. These are each designed to be clickable videos, and he designs the beginning of each stream with a nice exciting punch, some great gameplay and fun, not too much engagement with chat because that would make it feel more like a live stream, but just enough to keep his live audience engaged. Three times a day, forever and ever, this guy is crushing. He's getting hundreds of thousands of subscribers each month, and he's just doing so incredibly well as a result. This is, I think, the strongest archetype example of what makes YouTube streaming unique versus Twitch. On Twitch, you just go live for as long as humanly possible and hopefully prevail. On YouTube, you can go live for hour and a half to three and a half hour blocks, chop it up into separate videos essentially, and have a successful run that way. Typical gamer, really cool archetype. Let's check out the second archetype, which is just now emerging on YouTube. This is Alex Ramey Gaming, and this is more of the traditional Twitch strategy. As we scroll down here, it looks like the same thumbnail every single time because it basically is the same piece of content every time. However, you know, he's going live for about three to four hours, five hours, four hours, seven hours. The guy's just going live and grinds 11 hours. He's grinding it out on YouTube as much as possible playing Fortnite. In his strategy, as opposed to typical gamer, who's just a regular everyday guy, Alex Ramey's strategy is he is literally the number one player in the world at this game. 
Now he's not saying that he's the best player. He's the number one world ranked because he plays the most. He grinds the most, and don't get me wrong, he's phenomenal at the game, but he grinds and he puts in the time on uh, Xbox, I believe. That is a strategy that is possible for all of you. You don't have to be esports level players to prevail and to become a top world ranked person in a game, but you have to have time in order to do that. And Alex Ramey played this game on Xbox before everyone else. You probably hear the sirens. It's GTA Live. I, I live downtown in Vancouver, so it's impossible to record without sirens, but he's live as much as possible. And so his strategy, Alex Ramey, is basically to go live as often as possible, as much as possible, and to grind as much as possible and get the most wins as possible. And as you can see, his channel has massively grown. He gets 190,000, 250K views per video. And if we go back in time, he wasn't getting anywhere near that close as we go back further and further and further, 90K, 100K, et cetera, 80K, 23K. As you can see, the numbers just go way down, et cetera, over time. 3K, 2K, only four months ago, this guy was getting 1,000 to 3,000 views per video. Now he's getting hundreds of thousands in four months. How did he do it? He put in the time, he put in the grind, and he became the world's number one ranked player in Fortnite, and he rode this wave where Fortnite is now becoming the most popular game on YouTube, he rode it all the way to the top. That is one strategy that is very similar to what Twitch streamers can do, but I think that it worked even well for Alex here on YouTube because so many Twitch streamers are grinding this game anyway themselves. He basically put himself into a unique position where he was grinding more than anyone else on YouTube and he ended up becoming the top guy out of this 6,500 on YouTube. Whereas he, if he would have tried to pull that strategy off on Twitch uh, to try to capitalize on Fortnite, he would have been competing with Summit and all these mega streamers that already have 30,000 concurrents and he could have never become number one. Because he did it on YouTube Gaming, he became number one, and Alex Ramey is now a massively successful streamer. But let's take a look at his uh, setup here on screen. This is a streaming setup, a traditional streaming setup. He's got on-screen overlays, he's got a tiny webcam in the corner, top donos, all the subs, big old nasty looking pop-ups that come on the screen. This is not the same strategy as typical gamer. When these VODs release on his channel, they are clearly live streams. But people watch them afterwards as, as videos, but not as much. And the way that he gets traffic off of this is when people are searching for Fortnite and he's live, he generally becomes the number one or number two search result for Fortnite. So he gets tens of thousands, if not over a hundred thousand extra viewers coming in off the Fortnite search term going straight to his live stream because he's live with about 8K concurrence. Alex Ramey's capitalizing significantly off of that, but as you can see, these, this, these thumbnails are so homogenous. They're all the same. This doesn't make for great content viewing later uh, as a video, right? It's not very clickable. People watch him though because he's so good at the game, and so they will watch his videos later on, but not as much as a typical gamer. Take a look at the big difference. What's more clickable? All these streaming looking thumbnails right here or go to typical gamers channel. Wow, each one of these looks like an individual unique video. Sweet, there's tanks here, there's Battlefront, there's different characters, oh, there's Typical himself. So much more clickable. It's a completely different strategy. Typical gamer strategy is stronger. However, Alex Ramey has found massive success through the grind. All right, here's the third archetype that I'm gonna show you, and it's the event-based archetype. This is EW Network, he's got 600,000 subscribers. He gets more concurrent viewers during his live stream than both of the other guys. EW Network is a really, really unique example of where I think the future of live streaming is going, both on Twitch and YouTube, where it's just all about him. It's just him, and he happens to maybe be talking about a game, or maybe he happens to be playing a game, but it's about his personality first and foremost. It's almost an IRL stream that just 
or a live vlog, if you will, that just happens to be about a particular topic. That's something that a lot of you guys that are gamers or non-gamers should take away. Take away the EW Network example. I actually think he's on the cutting edge of what live streaming will be. And as you can see, his thumbnails here are very clickable. Each one is very unique. He has very, very clickable headlines. How I lost my Bitcoin investments. So long overdue. What is overdue? Uh, he's got these insane looking uh, thumbnails with crazy looking glitchy stuff. Uh, very clickable. These, these, All of these pieces of content are designed to be clickable as videos later. And as you can see, he doesn't upload that often. But when he does, he gets big viewership. 15,000, 25,000, 30,000 concurrents. Let me show you what that content looks like. Ever seen a gaming live stream that looks like this? Probably not many. Look how gigantic his webcam is there in the corner. It's all about Etika. It's all about his personality. It's all about his reactions. He's got both chats right here, freaking gigantic. And then there's a donation, huge here. And then there's a little bit of the game in the middle here on this part of the screen. The game takes up maybe 30% of the screen and the rest is about the community and his interactions with the community. This is a unique strategy that I feel like a lot of you can capitalize on. If you're funny, if you're charismatic, if you can just be down to earth and be super real, this type of strategy can work for you. As you can see, his reactions are great. Just look how like charismatic he is. He's just going crazy. He's just having a great time. And that's something that a lot of you uh, should take note of. You don't necessarily have to be the best player in the world like Alex Ramey. You don't necessarily have to grind it out for or uh, grind three streams a day out with beautiful looking thumbnails and be a total YouTube master like typical gamer to be successful. You could just flat out just be entertaining and pick things that you're passionate about and that you love and that passion and that love and that being real while you love that thing uh, comes out. As you can see right here, he's got 9,000 concurrent viewers of him playing a Sonic game, Sonic Forces. I mean, come on. This game is not very popular. Look at the popularity of this game. It is literally 98 times smaller. It is a fraction. It is a fly on the wall in comparison to Fortnite, but it doesn't matter. People are watching for Etika. They're watching for EW Network. Look at that entertainment. He switches to his full cam and he goes, woo, yeah, oh my God, let's do it, let's go. Ah. I mean, that's a bad impression, but you guys get it. He goes back to himself, then he goes back to the screen. Oh my God, let's go ahead, let's continue with this boss fight. You guys are going crazy. Throw such and such in chat. Oh my God, what, what, what? And that back and forth and that high energy action is why people watch him. Let's quickly recap, because these you may be like, oh, well, this was very basic. It was not. I'm telling you about serious opportunities here on YouTube. There are three archetypes that can work on YouTube, and there's only one archetype that works on Twitch. The three archetypes are typical gamer, stream multiple times per day, and design your streams to be watched as videos later. Nice and clean, beautiful thumbnails, come up with great titles, and make each one something unique. This is very difficult to pull off. Typical Gamer has had years of experience to make that happen. Second archetype, Alex Ramey. Go live for as much as you possibly can and grind it out like a super grind master and become top player in the world of that game, or at least far in progression in that game, etc. You can do it. If Alex Ramey can do it, you can do it, but you have to put in the time like Alex Ramey has. And the third archetype is EW Network. Choose specific things that you love and that you're passionate about, go live with it, and your audience will go totally bananas when you go bananas about that thing. Whether it's a video game, whether it's uh, you trying on clothes if you're a fashion YouTuber, whether it's you getting a haircut, you can do all sorts of things. If your reaction is real, is it, if it's tangible, if it's exciting, then people will gravitate toward your live stream and your channel. Cool, I hope that that was helpful to you. I hope these tips are something that uh, really help you succeed. And I hope I changed your mind about the viability of YouTube as a streaming platform. It is super viable, it is trending upwards. Don't ignore it. And if you guys thought that this video was helpful, subscribe right now and en enable notifications. I'm doing everything in my power to help YouTubers, streamers, creators, and podcasters become successful. Subscribe, enable notifications, and I'm going to bring you the best information in the industry every single video on the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Adios, creators. Go crush it.